G'day mate, welcome to Factorio Fundamentals with me, Jedi. So in our last video, we covered smelter designs, which of course we have here on the left. And with that, that really leads us into this video, which is choosing your overarching base design, be it either belts or bots or with tra or trains. So with that said, let's run the intro and then we'll get into it. So with that out of the way, the first thing I really want to cover is I really want to cover a belt base. Main reason I want to cover belts is one, they're inherently part of Factorio. They are what makes Factorio Factorio. On top of that, you're already playing with belts, I guarantee it. You've probably already built yourself a spaghetti base where you're just running belts in any old direction without any rhyme, reason, care, or direction, but that's perfectly fine because Honestly, a spaghetti base is the is the type of base I prefer. They're very, very organic. They're very, very unique and interesting to look at. I'll put it that way. And they're probably the easiest for a new player to get their head around and start actually enjoying Factorio. So the first thing I want to cover really is a main bus design. Now, the reason I want to cover a main bus first, one, it continues with that belts that we've already been working on, as said with the spaghetti base you're definitely used to using belts already. On top of that, its biggest advantage is you can quickly and easily see what parts of the base are suffering and need a little bit more work and what parts of the base are actually doing perfectly well and you don't need to worry about right now. So first off, we'll cover some, some basics, some fundamentals, some really critically important parts are, that define a main bus as a main bus. So as you can see, I've got, I'm standing between my iron and my copper lanes. This is generally how a main bus starts. You have your smelters on the left with iron and copper coming out and some people bring them close together. I've actually chosen to have a, quite a wide gap down the middle of my bus, mainly for two reasons. One, generally people have a four tile gap and that is purely because a roboport is four tiles wide. So most people tend to have at least a four tile gap down the middle, one to run roboports. As the game progresses, you end up getting roboports, which help with both automatic construction tasks and also automatically delivering you, delivering you more materials so you can continue building your base without having to run back and get more materials all the time. At the same time, most people also run power poles down the middle of their main bus as well. As I said, in my case, I actually chose a much wider main bus, mainly for the reason of I could run this brick path down the middle to give me, myself a little bit faster movement speed. The other thing that really defines a main bus, and it's something that you really have to decide, uh, decide before you start building it, how many lanes you're gonna use for your main bus. So I've actually, the, the, the default is really four. And the reason the default is four is because our yellow splitters only underground or our yellow undergrounds only pass under four tiles before they need to come back up and then go back down so generally most main buses have four lanes with a two uh four tiles with a two tile gap and then another four four tiles this is to account for your undergrounds bringing your copper your iron your green circuits whatever it is and then rising back up and then popping back down again to then pass over the next four lanes. In my case, I actually chose a six lane main bus, mainly because red belt is really not that hard to get. And it means that I can have, rather than every four lanes, have this two tile gap. I can actually have mine every six lanes and then have a two tile gap. The other option, you can pre-plan for it. I've, I've seen some people do it. I've seen a lot of people not bother, is you can go for an eight lane main bus. So you can have eight lanes and then your two tile gap and then another eight lanes. The main reason being a yellow belt goes under four tiles, a red belt goes under six tiles, and of course the blue belt goes under eight tiles. So there are your three different options. I see a lot of people stick to yellow belt. Yellow belt's nice and simple. There are lots and lots of materials that you will never need to run faster than yellow belt speed. Coal is at the top of my list of examples. Uh, brick and stone are again, top of my list of examples. You just won't need faster than a yellow belt's, through, uh, yellow belt's worth of throughput inside your base to go from a start to a rocket. If you wanna go faster, you wanna build larger, you might need to upgrade some of those belts to red belts, but generally yellow belt is, is fast enough for a lot of items. On top of that, yellow belt's quick, easy, cheap to get. And lastly, really to get from a, a the start of the early game all the way through to launching a rocket, really only you, you only need four lanes of both iron and copper to get you from the start to the end. Any more than that is 
somewhat excess, somewhat pre-planning to continue the base to build bigger and continue with the main bus design. Um, as I said, in my case, I actually chose to run six lanes. The main reason is this is actually taken from my uh, Factorio Rocket Rush series. I will actually link up to that in the top right-hand corner. It was a, a series started just before Factorio 1.0 uh, was actually launched. It was my, my last series before Factorio 1.0 uh, launched and the concept for the series was we were wanted to launch a rocket but we wanted to do it a little bit bigger a little bit faster we wanted to have a base that was not capable of launching a rocket but capable of launching many 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 rockets i think at the current time of this recording it's up to about twenty three thousand rockets and counting and we ran a six lane main bus for quite a long period of that particular series so as I said, we've got our six lanes and our six lanes. Now, that's what I've chosen. Everybody else is different. You might want something else. Um, as we can see, as I said, with coal, coal is running on a yellow belt. But because I need to make a six tile uh, a six tile gap, I've had to use red undergrounds to pass underneath my main bus. So it's something you're going to have to look at and something you're going to have to swap and change and, and, and chop and choose with. So the other important thing when it comes to main bus is as the materials feed into the main bus, anytime you want to branch off to make a new construction or a new type of material, generally you split off the main bus and you bring it up and then bring the new material back down. Now it does mean that as you can see with my main bus, I'm only building on one side of the main bus because in theory, all the new materials you should bring in should be coming to the bottom side of the bus, or if you want to save a little bit of belts, you can slowly move your builds up and up and up, which as you can see, this is what I've done. All of my builds are slowly creeping further and further away from the main bus as new belts get fed in from the top. Those sort of design uh, particulars are really, really up to you, but generally, as I said, main concept of a main bus is when you take your materials off you'll branch them off you'll bring them up down left right wherever it wherever it is depending on your orientation of your main bus and then once you've branched them off the very next thing you'll do is you'll bring that new production in and add it back into your bus as we can see obviously my gears are not doing terribly well mainly because we're going through a yellow splitter which is slowing down our production but even after doing that i can see that my gears are not doing terribly well and this is the biggest advantage with the main bus design you can quickly at a glance see where your base is suffering so if i was to change that to red speed and also turn that belt back on we'll see very very quickly in just a moment that we're having more and more gears passed down onto our gear belt which should give us more throughput overall in the end the other thing i should cover very very quickly is you also need to decide roughly how many lanes you're going to use for different items so as we can see i've intentionally decided that i'm going to run two lanes of gears and I haven't built two separate builds to feed two separate lanes just yet. That's a future plan. But what I've actually done is I've put a splitter in here to run a second belt so I don't accidentally use the same tiles for something else. And again, I've done the exact same with plastic. Plastic, I actually had one lane dedicated with a splitter just duplicating to a second line. And then in the future, I actually ran a second lane of plastic to feed into the other side of the splitter. So... That's really what it comes down to with the main bus. You need to decide, one, how many lanes you're going to use for things, and two, to sort of plan that into your design as you work your way forward. Main bus designs are a little bit, a little bit unique, and they definitely improve with practice and with time, so you get more understanding of how many, how many lanes you need to allocate for different things. I have seen a lot of people start building their main bus designs, and we'll come back down to our example and we'll just use the copy paste command and they'll just do this they'll just pre-allocate 30 lanes 30 lanes 40 lanes whatever it happens to be right from the start right from the get-go and here's the robots to come build all this stuff for me i told you they're going to be very very important later in the game they'll just allocate you know so many lanes right at the very start of the game and that's how many they have allocated. And then as they add more production, they just bring a new item in and they feed it into the next allocated belt. That is perfectly fine. That's a perfectly rational way of building a main bus. I have seen a lot of people do that for their first, their second base, just because they lack that experience. And honestly, I'd probably recommend that for your first couple of bases. Just allocate 20 lanes, 20 lanes, 30 lanes. Um, however many you decide, if you're playing a modified playthrough, it might end up being 50 lanes. I have seen main buses with over 100 different lanes of material. 
just because it was a heavy modified playthrough with lots and lots of unique items. So going back to our, uh, our Gears example, as you can see, it's obviously doing a lot better. Uh, next example I actually have over here is uh, Green Circuits. And there is, and I will actually link this video up in the top right hand corner, plus it's also the next video in the playlist. There is a lot of different ways to pull materials off your main bus. I actually prefer the what I coined as the reverse waterfall method, where I intentionally where's a good example? Well, we'll make we'll make our green circuits a good example. I intentionally take these two lanes and I compress them up. Um, well, actually, I take all the lanes and I compress them up. Um, uh, we'll, we'll use it with the gears example. So I take this top lane and I pull it off and then I use this next splitter to move the materials up to the next lane. And then I use the next splitter to move the materials up, the next splitter to move the materials up, so on and so forth. And as you can see, that's pretty much what I just did with gears, uh, with electronic circuits. I've cleared the bottom lane entirely by using the splitters to move the material up and recompress it. And if we do that again, we should see that... I have one and a half lanes, maybe, of electronic circuits. Um, that's all I actually have running down my main bus. Let's just split you guys out and we'll put you back on your priority to slide upwards. And yeah, it's it's one and a half lanes if I'd be lucky of uh, green circuits, which is obviously going to cause me problems further down the bus where I just don't have enough materials. Again, if we just change that bit of belt to red belt, that bit of belt to red belt, which should double the throughput I'm having going into my green circuit build, and we give it a couple of moments. And we can see we've definitely improved the amount of materials I have on this second lane. It's still not perfect, obviously. I'd have to go back and I'd have to look at my green circuit build and improve it more and more and more, but we can definitely see that I went from one and a half belts, roughly, up to two full belts by just improving the build that I had up here. I was choking the amount of copper that I could get into it. After fixing that, we're getting a lot more throughput. In fact, actually we're up to two belts. Maybe we'll have two and a half belts, but we'll see. Anyway, that is the main concept of a main bus. You wanna be able to pull materials off very, very quickly, very, very easily go out to a new production and then bring that new material back onto your bus. If we continue along by main bus that I have here, we can see, look, the next problem I've got is obviously my gears belt is still not doing terribly well. And we've also added red circuits here. And I can see that even though, again, I've allocated two lanes and I've just done that by feeding you know, into a splitter to allocate it to the second lane, even though I don't have nearly enough materials to fill that second lane, I, I, don't have enough production. Um, obviously, that's probably the next thing I should work on in this base. I should look at my red circuit build and say, can I improve this? Can I duplicate this? What can I do to speed this up? And we can see as we walk up here, it's obviously running out of green circuit. So again, my bottleneck is not actually with the red circuit build just yet. It's probably with the green circuit build or the fact that it's being limited by yellow belt speed. If I upgraded this and everything backwards to a red belt speed and had more throughput, then obviously maybe it would end up being uh, that I just had enough had enough production of red circuits, but not nearly enough green circuits to feed into my red circuit production. And the same continues down and down the main bus. At the same time, there are a couple of other things when it comes to a main bus. A lot of people allocate a lane and they'll allocate it forever. Uh, in my case, I actually allocate a lane and then I'll remove that lane when we no longer need it. Um, I'm just looking for an example. Oh, there we go. So. I'm bringing sulfur along here, and I know that sulfur comes from my oil production, which is actually all the way up here, nowhere near the start of my main bus. It's actually belted from here all the way across on this yellow, yellow, yellow material on the yellow belt, and then brought into the main bus, run all the way along, and run, well, from there up to here. And then I actually terminate the line here. I bring it straight up, and I plump, I plumb it into your chemical science, because I don't actually need sulfur anywhere else on the bus which technically frees up this lane. And I could use this lane further down the main bus for another material. If I was to add, uh, oh, I actually have done it here. Oh, there we go. So I have um, robot frames, which are used to create robot, uh, used to, be, to create both the logistics bots and the construction bots. And as you can see, I'm bringing robot frames to here. And then I'm actually terminating that line of the, the, the bus right there, not continuing on. 
that's the last time that item is required on the bus, which means I freed up that lane. And then as we can see, I've actually made blue circuits here, which I'm feeding back into the same line because it's actually needed for uh, utility sites. It's actually needed for utility sites. But at the same time, I've actually taken that lane that I've terminated and turn it into my new processing units being the blue circuits uh, bus lane. And we're going to bring that one forward. So... With the main bus, you don't have to carry lanes on forever if they're not actually doing something. You can terminate them and then reallocate that lane to something else. It can come back and bite you in the future where you suddenly realize that maybe you did actually need sulfur for something else further down your production line or you needed uh, flying robot frames for something else down your production line, at which point the lane that was allocated to it's sort of used by something else, so you need to spaghetti something in. But... Um, if we go back to the core fundamentals of a main bus, we can see that I have my six lanes of copper, my six lanes of iron, then I got a two tile gap, and then I technically have another six lanes. Um, I have this one, was, which is gears. We do remember right back at the start, I had allocated a second lane for gears, so I ha actually have a blank here where I haven't run the belt all the way through yet, but I have left that blank to run gears in the future. And then we have, uh, after going under two lanes worth of gears, four lanes of green circuits, I've popped up and then back down again to to have that two-tile gap to run my undergrounds through. And then I've run just under a couple lanes. Ideally, this should be up further to run my steel and belts, uh, steel and batteries together to run the robot frames that we were talking about previously. So that is the fundamental ideas behind a main bus design. Its biggest advantage is it is very, very easily easy to see what you're short on, where you should be spending your time and your effort increasing production in different areas. The downside is it is very, very expensive in belts to actually produce. On top of that, you actually have a lot of material being stored on the bus. So if I was to stand here, hold the F button to just remove items off the belt and throw them in my inventory, um, I could stand here for quite some time trying to fill up my inventory before I have any sort of significant issue that I can see on my main bus. Um, in fact, actually, if we just cut those lanes entirely as, you know, my iron train stopped running, your main bus, because the sheer amount of material stored on it, can have a significant delay between you running out of a production item or running into a shortage of a production item and you actually noticing it in in your base on your belts all depends on how important that item is how quickly you're using that item and how many belts you have allocated to buffering that item i've seen a great example is steel i see a lot of people allocate four lanes to steel they fill it up same as i did with gears with a couple of splitters to run it out to four different lanes um something like uh this and then as the game progresses they don't use that steel so it buffers up for a very very long time onto a lot of belts you have to remember that every single tile of the belt holds eight pieces of whatever items on there so if you have a bus that is uh let's just grab a deconstruction planner and do a quick count 200 odd tiles long at uh 200 tiles long four lanes wide eight items per lane you can, uh, eight items per tile you can have easily six thousand pieces of steel or whatever the item be sitting on that on those belts being buffered that means if you're if your consumption suddenly suddenly starts going above your production, it might take a long time for it to actually be apparent that that's the item you're short on. So, like, like I said, this base does come with a certain amount of pros and cons, but it ha its its biggest advantage is you can quickly and easily, for a new player, see where your shortfalls are, what you need to work on next. But with all that said, we're going to jump onto our next type of base design. We're going to talk about our favorite robotic flying friends so the second type of base i want to talk about is a logistics robot base now main reason i want to talk about these is they have different advantages and disadvantages to the main bus design which we just visited the first really really big advantage is neatness goes out the window you have flying robots that are going to handle all the complicated uh, things like getting things from a to b for you that's really the massive massive advantage 
The disadvantage they have is it becomes a little bit harder to work out what you're short on and why things aren't running. So this is a test map I built fairly, fairly quickly in creative mode. And if we scroll through here, we can see I have these tiny little logistics robots, which is something you're gonna actually unlock as you progress through Factorio. As I said, they come with advantages and disadvantages. I actually use logistic bots all the time, but I tend to mainly stick to belt bases. Not guaranteed, but mostly I stick to belt bases. Biggest advantage of log logistic spots is if you're short of something, if you need more belt, rather than having to run back and go grab more belt, the idea is logistic spots will come and bring belt to you at all times to make sure you have all the belt you need to continue building and playing your base in Factorio. So as the logistic spots, um, the way I've got these guys set up is we have mining where we've got electric, uh, electric mining drills, which are mining straight into a box. And then robots are coming in, taking that iron ore and flying it over our smelters, which our smelters are turning the iron ore into iron plate. And I have a number of smelters with a number of robots sitting around waiting to charge because obviously even with the amount of robot ports I put down, it's not nearly enough. Um, don't ask me what power looks like. Robots use a lot of power. Uh, on top of that, we can see we have our very first a uh, couple of assemblers up here. It's a little bit hard to see with the flying swarm of ant, uh, swarm of ants we've got going through the sky. But we are converting our iron plate through our logistics chest. I will be actually covering bots in greater depth in a follow-up video. You could probably see that up the top right-hand corner after it's been published. Uh, we have request chest bringing in iron plate, and then obviously these assemblers are hard at work making a whole bunch of gears. We've got plenty of gears up and running. But as you can see, it then moves it down to the next step, which is we take in the gears, we take in some copper, we make some red science. Again, I've got a good amount of red science, so we can see our bottlenecks, obviously not with red science. Uh, and then I have across here, we're just gonna zoom out really quickly, because it gets a little bit louder as we walk through here. I have red science, green science, military science, blue science, uh, well, chemical science, production science, and my utility science is down here. So I have all the sciences, and I have robots flying everything from A to B. It does mean that I don't have to worry about where things are being placed. Uh, the prime example is, as we can see on the mini map, uh, if I can find my mouse, I'm here, my copper's all the way down here, but we're making electronic circuits here, right sort of in the middle, which is bringing uh, obviously copper from the bottom all the way up to make our copper cable. And at the same time, we're also bringing iron, well, we're bringing copper from the bottom and iron from the top, meeting them in the middle to make a whole bunch of electronic circuits. And as you see, that chest has 3.4K in it. I'm probably not short of uh, electronic circuits, but I have another build here. And this continues down throughout the base. Um, actually, it looks like the one thing I'm short on is, and this is really the only way you find out what you're short on in a robot style base, is by going around and physically looking in chests and checking um, where things are short in the base. Uh, I can see, obviously, I'm not making that many uh, advanced circuits because I don't have nearly enough copper cable, which probably means these guys are not working hard enough, they don't have enough copper, so on and so forth. So we can chase the problem around. The, probably the one advantage you do have is you can up and down requests. So uh, this one's only requesting 75. I can take that up to requesting 200, 2000, whatever it happens to be. But I can also say that obviously I actually have a copper plate shortage, which is probably due to not nearly enough smelters. So this is the advantage of a robot base. Like everything can be anywhere. Um, in fact, I've actually got iron gears all the way down here at the bottom, which means I'm flying iron plate from the top of the map to the bottom of the map to make gears to then potentially fly them all the way back to the top of the map to then make uh, automation science, so red science. So it has its advantages and disadvantages. The biggest advantage is you can be a mess. It doesn't matter where things go, you can dump them anywhere. The biggest disadvantage is trying to find out what you're short on, what's causing your problems, can be a little bit awkward. Um, we did already determine that it's probably copper. Uh, and yeah, it's turns out it's not nearly enough smelting. Um, I have plenty of copper ore to, yeah, 280,000 copper ore, but I'm just not smelting it fast enough. So again, with, with robots and with construction robots, I can quickly and easily duplicate builds and have more copper plate. The catch is I then have to have more robots flying in the air 
and it makes this whole ant swarm thing a whole lot worse. Uh, but yes, this is the second most common, or what, this is the second style of base I want to show off. As said, there are definitely pros and cons to the, this style. If you are building a spaghetti base and you is a little bit of a mess and it is time to tidy things up, a lot of people make a transition from a spaghetti base over to a bot base and then some people stay with a bot base some people transfer back to a main bus space other people transfer onto the third type we're about to cover which is train style base so what we have here is really a third style of base design this is train heavy i won't say it's only trains because there are more extreme versions of trains only but this is a very very heavy train based design this is actually based around another concept called a city block where Things are generally built in squares that are copied and pasted around to give you, you know, essentially a couple of intersections and everything's built inside uh, that area being a city block. Uh, it's not a base that I've I've particularly enjoyed playing. It's not one I've spent a lot of time playing. In fact, actually, this base was donated by uh, Oleg. I did actually review this base probably about a year ago, and I should link it up in the top right-hand corner. But as you can see, this is based around trains. So there is limited use of belts. There is no use of bots anywhere on the map. In fact, if we turn on the logistics network, there's one robot up here, which is, I think, from memory, purely to refuel trains. That's all it does. So what we have up here, what we have here is basically trains come in, they unload all the ore, we smelt all the ore, and then we pump it out the other side into yet another train and that train may take it to absolutely anywhere in fact uh this particular train is going to engines engines green science and red science so it goes to a number of different places and as you can see i have a there's another smelting uh set here for again more iron plate and another one and that's a stacker to hold the trains in when they're not running around here, there, and all over the place. Uh, here we have... What is this? This is probably... Uh, oh, this is uh, chemical science on the old design. So, yes, this is uh, a little bit of an old base, a little bit out of date now. Um, but there's also a high chance that a train may kill you whilst you're running around your own base. So, you have been warned. As it, this is a very, very heavy train map. Uh, if we turn off train stop names um unfortunately um some of the trains are still moving like i said this is built around an old version of factory so it didn't exactly update a couple of recipes changed yeah it, it happens with factory during the the earlier expen uh, experimental phases uh but we can see that obviously this train's loading up with iron plate it's thinking going to continue off to the depot and then back to green science to sit there wait for green science to be emptied and then move across like i said this is a heavy train based map it's not a dedicated train based map i have actually toured and i may link up in the top right hand corner a pure train based map there were no belts there were no i think there was bots only to refuel trains uh or maybe it was belts to refuel trains but yes it was heavy 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 trains only uh lastly i want to actually check a hybrid base so we're gonna put in a cut we'll go jump and look at that one lastly we have a hybrid base now this base was actually donated by a janu and i need to thank him so much for being able to donate this on short order because it turns out i really didn't have any real hybrid bases at least nothing running on the current version of factor i did have some older ones but you know they're a little bit out of date at this stage so as you can see we have trains here we have very very tiny trains not the giant ones we just had in oleg space we have much more sensible sized trains here. Yeah, a one, two is more than enough to run most bases up to a certain degree. And as you can see, we're unloading these, oh, he's unloading these trains into, uh, into the robot network. So then we have robots flying around, moving things around very, very quickly, unloading onto belts. So that's our third type of, you know, base element so far. And then of course, he doesn't have a main bus. He really has a bit of spaghetti. So he's got his iron ore passing, uh, his copper ore passing down, which is then getting turned to plate, which is then going this way, yet there's a belt going up here. Oh, there's, there's a, a split off here that's going up. Like, spaghetti bases have the advantage of they are very, very organic. They're actually my favorite type of base to build and my favorite type to design because they just 
They run however they run. We don't care how they run as long as they run. That's really the golden goal. And in fact, actually he's got sushi belts. So that is belts with mixed junk on them being fed through the base. There you go. We've got a little bit of everything in this base. But like I said, this is really designed around being organic, being fun to play, and is using all three elements. So he's using belts where belts make sense, he's using bots where bots make sense, and he's using trains where trains make sense. So I'll go through it very, very quickly. The main disadvantages and advantages of, of each. So trains obviously have a very, very high throughput. Um, each one of these wagons carries 2,000 iron ore. They have a very, very high throughput. They're also very good at long distances. The catch is there's a fair bit of infrastructure to set them up and they don't exactly sneak through a base terribly well. Uh, belts. Belts are very good at medium throughput, medium distance. So if you want to go from one side of the base to the other, belts are definitely the way to go. They, as I said, medium throughput, medium distance. Bots, on the other hand, super, super, super high throughput. You can see how quickly they're emptying a train that's just dumped two wagons at 2,000 ore each and the ores instantly being removed from those trains here we go we can see the iron's about to uh any second now it's gone it's gone the inserters are taking longer than the bots are to remove everything from the from the chests uh to remove everything from the trains and then the bots have just dealt with everything so Again, robots are super, super, super high throughput, but also super, super, super short distance. The bot base that I actually showed earlier, I wouldn't recommend. The bots were flying everywhere. They were doing some crazy things. In fact, this is all running on uh, 300 robots, 300 robots, whereas I had several thousand in the air. But yeah, with that said, I think that's where we're going to leave this video. We've covered the three main different types of bases, and honestly, I really recommend for a first time player, except that it's going to be a little bit, it's going to be spaghetti. I, I, I won't even say it's going to be a little bit spaghetti. It's going to be very, very spaghetti. After you've got through your first base, maybe your second base, try looking at a main bus design. They are very, very easy for players to get acclimatized to and understand how Factorio works. You're probably going to end up with some sort of hybrid base where you're using trains to bring things in long distance which is exactly uh, what's happening here. We've got trains going and visiting far outposts out here, picking up all the iron ore, which is bringing, being brought in by belts, being brought in by bots, being brought in. However it's being brought in, it really doesn't matter. Loaded in a train and then being run all the way back to the base where it's being unloaded. So, as I said, first time round, spaghetti. Second time round, third time round, whatever it happens to be. Try looking at a main bus except that it's probably going to end up being some sort of hybrid base and generally a lot of players stick with the hybrid base okay a lot of players are very very happy with using each of the different base styles to their advantage yes there are some insane people out there that build same as oleg did a very very train heavy base running on the city block concept there are some people that do a city block concept but then inside each city block block rather having belts they end up actually having uh, robots and there are the fire third type of crazy people that have a city block design where there's only trains um, But with all that said, that's where I'm going to end this video as always If you have any questions if you need any more help when it comes to Factorio, by all means come join our discord links up at the top right hand corner Right about now at the same time if you like this video if you found this video helpful Click the subscribe button click the like button especially if, if you learned something along the way lastly I will mention for a main bus style which is as said Probably the one I recommend most new players start to look at. Main bus style, there is the very next video in this playlist, a link to how to pull things off the main bus. Because that's very, very important when it comes to a main bus design and keeping your main bus working and working well. With all that said, I'm out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, bye.